Yo, what's going on YouTube? It is Dom, aka KT2, and I'm coming back to you guys again for yet another video, guys. And today, I have an exclusive, and I mean boom, 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 an exclusive interview with a real-life signal officer, guys. A signal, at least I think he's a signal officer. We're gonna, we're gonna check in with him. And this is my man, Kenny. Without further ado, thank you, Kenny, for coming to the show. Hey, thank you for having me on, Dom a long time waiting hey man hey man thank you it is my pleasure so just so the audience knows just so the audience knows man what type of officer are you so i am currently a 25 alpha that is a signal signal officer okay and you guys heard it this is a real life signal officer this is something everybody wants to know everything about signal what it's like what it's not like what rank are you so I'm currently right now a first lieutenant. A first lieutenant. Okay, okay. Um, just break it down for us real quick. How long have you been an officer, and how long have you been at your current job? Or as in the army, I've been in the army since 2018. Okay. So currently three years. Um, I commissioned. I was year group uh, February 2019. So I've actually been an officer now for two years. Currently right now in Fort Carson, Colorado. So it's been pretty good here so far. It's uh, probably one of the, the best duty stations in the army, to be honest. This and JBLM. Why did you pick? I, I mean, so you've got you've got all these amazing branches in the army. You've got all these amazing branches. You have quartermaster, 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 and you have quartermaster, <laughs> right? You've got all these amazing branches like quartermaster. So why did you pick? What 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 brought you to to signal to a twenty five alpha? So yeah, so I, my commissioning source was OCS, the same as yours. In OCS, you have, uh, I guess, branch allocation week, which is the week where you list your top, you know, your top five branches that you wish to acquire. My, you know, the last day, I, I was like, I, I didn't know what to pick, whether a quartermaster or signal, and I was debating between both of them because they both have a good, uh, I guess, job outcome and the, the mission. I like the mission for quartermaster and I also like the mission for, for signal. By the end, I ended up picking actually signal because I, I like the mission that signal had and I like the things that you can do with signal. The, the fact that signal, you could be literally stationed anywhere. Let's say armor, right? If you're armor, if you're an armor officer or infantry officer, you can't be stationed in San Antonio, Texas. You can't be stationed in Florida. So signal and logistics are, are one of those branches where you can actually go anywhere in the world. You're always going to need a signal officer and a logistician. So at the end, I was, uh, you know, I was going both back and forth with signal and logistics, and I ended up picking up uh, signal because of the prosperity that you have in the outside world as well. You know. With, with you being in the Army, you're you're never guaranteed anything. You can always get hurt in the Army. I mean, look at you. You're, you're airborne. You cool. know, God forbid something, you know, God forbid something happens and uh, <laughs> you, land, you, you land bad one day and, you know, you break a leg or you, you hurt your hip or whatnot and your career is cut short in the Army. With Signal, I have the chance that I could make a, a good living in the outside world. Okay. Okay. So let's um, let's actually get a little more in depth with it, right? What is the day-to-day -day life like as a signal officer now? From my understanding, a signal officer is basically just going to be a staff officer when they come in as a second lieutenant. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I, I believe that they're just going to be a staff officer. So can you run us through the um, the day-to-day -day life as um, an AS6, an assistant S6? If everybody doesn't know, S66 is signal, communications, whatever you want to call it. Um, can you run us through um, life in, in, in the staff, you know, on battalion or brigade staff? Yeah, definitely. So when I graduated Bolick, I actually came and I was an AS6. So there was already a captain that was uh, the S6 OIC. So I was the AS6. A lot of, a lot of it has to do with being a, an, OS, uh, an S6, excuse me, has to do with uh, comp stats and getting your equipment to function. Because, uh, like, everything in the Army, everything is always broken. Oh. Everything is always broken. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same thing with communications. Like, I'm, in a, I'm currently right now in a, in a SBCT. We just transitioned to SBCT from the IBCT last year. So, right now, the big thing is, for example, JCRs. So, every Monday, 
We have to send up a CompStat report. Uh, how many JCRs we have on hand? How many authorized? How many are actually working? So the colonel wants to know on a weekly basis how that CompStat is looking and what are you doing to fix it? You know, whether it's JCR, radios, uh, uh, Blue Force trackers, uh, inhibitors. So that's one aspect of being uh, an S6, uh, as well as nipper services, nipper zipper services. You have incoming soldiers on a daily basis who need nipper accounts, um, getting those SARS requests up as well. And a lot of it, being on staff, a lot of it is planning. Okay. A lot of it is planning for future for future operations, future exercises. Like I just came back from the field for two weeks. Now we're going back in the end of April. So I have to start the planning for that. You know, you have to request satellite requests for Nipper Sipper. So an IBCT is an infantry brigade combat team. Okay. An SBCT is a striker brigade combat team. So last year, our, our brigade was an infantry brigade combat team. We transitioned to strikers. So now every battalion actually has strikers on hand. So a lot of our Humvees got replaced with strikers, which uh, if you don't know what a striker is, is an eight wheeled, uh, basically an eight wheel tank. If you Google striker, it will give you a pretty good picture of it. And then we've also been uh, getting fielded. I don't know if you're tracking the new JLTVs, which oh. are going to replace the Humvees. Fancy. Y'all rich, so, rich. <laughs> Y'all rich, rich. Yeah, we've been so we're, we're getting fueled with the new JLTVs in uh, the end of April. So that's what's happening. And then as far as Nipper, Sipper, to elaborate on that, Sipper uh, is a secured internet line. So you can pull up web pages that are, you know, secret. Um, and then Nipper uh, is non-secured internet protocol line. Mm. So Nipper, you know, Nipper is what you'll give, like, you know, like the... Let's say we're out in the field. If you get like uh, the Cooks, the S3, they'll have nipper lines. But then you have the S2 and the Spo. He'll need a zipper line, or you know, the battalion commander. He'll need a, a zipper line for his uh, his secret uh, emails, Outlook, and things of that nature. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. Do uh, so on staff from your purview, right? We know everywhere is a little different. Do you guys do PT in the morning or the afternoon? Do you guys do PT on staff? Do you do you know what PT is? Like, I don't know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Being you know, with us being regular line officers, we you know we aren't specialized uh, officers like medical corps officers or whatnot. So as a regular line officer in, in an IBCT SBCT, you're you're definitely doing PT. Okay. Because <laughs> usually. Usually that colonel is either uh, an engineer, infantry officer, or a logistician, so they're, they're going to make you PT. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. I live, I know I'm stationed, and I've been stationed in Germany for God knows how long, maybe like three, four years. And over here, yeah. our life is a little different. We do afternoon PT, and that's that's all I've experienced. Do, and so stateside in Colorado, do you guys tend to do... Um, afternoon PT at the end of the day? Do you guys do PT in the middle of the day? Or do you guys do PT in the morning? Oh, no, no, no. It's morning. Morning PT it's over morning. there. Yeah, we do morning PT. So I usually um, I usually wake up at 0500, you know, get because the traffic, traffic, uh, Colorado Springs is a pretty big base. So the traffic is pretty bad. So I usually, you know, got to be at formation 0625. So I usually try to leave my house like at 0545, try to get there, you know, 15 minutes prior. But yeah, most 90% of units here in, uh, in Fort Carson, they PT in the morning. And yeah, it's, it's, it's cold too. So unless it, unless it gets really, really cold, like it's in the negatives, they don't cancel PT either. Oh, wow. Okay, that's, that's, <laughs> that's interesting. It's interesting. I know um, life is a little different over here in Germany. So, um, uh, so you mentioned you get up about 05, you said? Correct. Yeah, 0500, yeah. So when would you end your day typically? So it's, you know, it's a little bit different on staff. Usually your days are longer on staff just because surprisingly there's more work to do on staff than there is as a PL. So just a little bit about my background. Uh, when I came to Carson, I was an AS6 for, for five months. So I was on staff for five months. I was waiting for my platoon. I finally was lucky enough to get a platoon. I was a platoon leader for a year. And as a platoon leader, um, you're not under direct guidance 
from the battalion XO or the battalion commander. You're going to the guidance of the company commander. So usually the company commander, he's in charge of that, of that company. And you, your days are not as long because you have more NTOs to help you out. You know, you have your platoon sergeant and then you have like, a, you know, when I was a PL, I had like five sergeants, uh, E5 types that would help me out with my day-to-day operations. So my days weren't as long, uh, you know, usually by 1700, I was out of the office. Mm. Now as a staffer, as a S6 OIC, um, my days are a lot longer. I do have an NTO OIC, but that's about it, all the help I get. And as a, as a staff primary, you are in meetings literally every day. Every day you are in meetings, whether it's, uh, you know, your, your QTB, your training meetings, your uh, staff meetings, brigade S6 uh, meetings. It's just every day is a meeting. And that, you know, <laughs> those meetings take time away from you actually doing your work. Life as an so officer. My... <laughs> exactly. So, so it, you know, I, I constantly ask myself, you know, when am I actually going to get time to do work if I'm sitting in meetings every day? Yep. We could, we could generally say you get up at 05, um, you're at work till about 19, and what time would you say you actually go to sleep? Would you say it's about 22, 21? Uh, what do you think? Oh, I mean, usually, to be honest, and, and this is just me because I have a, I'm starting a side business as well. So, you know, I, I got to work on my other goals besides the Army on, on my own time. Gotcha. So I'm, so I'm usually, I usually go to sleep around 2300, which is late. 2300, which is late. I should be going to sleep earlier. But I usually go to sleep around 22, uh, 30, 2300. Okay, okay, okay. Um, normally, this is the part where I'd ask what are your general responsibilities like for, for your job. But I think I think you thoroughly covered it in the uh, in the previous question. So we're just going to move on to to okay. the question everybody uh, wants to know: What are the benefits to being a twenty five alpha? So the benefits of being a twenty five alpha. I mean, I think there's a lot of benefits of being a 25 alpha, such as, uh, like I previously stated, um, as a 25 alpha, like the the job opportunities within and out of the army are are abundant. You know, as far as like uh, being stationed, you can literally be stationed anywhere, anywhere in the world. If there is an army duty station there, there I guarantee you there will be 25 series soldiers. Okay. So. Just the fact that you can be stationed anywhere was very appealing to me. So, like, you know, if I want to go to Belgium, if I want to go to Germany, if I want to go to Spain, I'm, there are jobs out there for signal. If you want to go to Tampa, Florida, Texas, wherever you want to go, there will always be a job there as opposed to certain, like, maneuver jobs, like armor, infantry. There's only certain duty stations they can be stationed at as opposed to logistics and signal. So mm-hmm. that was one of the, you know, that's one of the, huge benefits that I believe that signal gives you um, also as far as like the actual job with, within the army it's it's an important job like as far as as far as what we do in the army you provide communications whether it's uh, data communications uh, voice communications to the whole army now you know a lot of people um, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, signal officers are, are, are geeks or, or, <laughs> or whatnot, but I'm telling you, uh, it's not the case at all. Like, our mission is very important. The, the current battalion that I'm in now, they take combo and signal extremely important, especially with us doing a, we have a CTC rotation coming up, and, you know, they, they've, every day they've expressed how important it is uh, to have that communications up and working. Um, so that's one of the, the second thing that I liked about Signal, just uh, the mission within the army that they have was really appealing to me. And uh, I would say like the, like the third thing that, that I like about Signal is, you know, the fact that you can't get those, cert, those certs, like uh, you can get Security Plus, uh, Network Plus, a bunch of plethora of actual certs that will help you out within the army. Hmm. Because if you have those certs, you can actually get cool stations like be stationed in Washington D.C., the White House, um, you know, certain secret locations as well. So that really appealed to me about the the, the whole Sigma Corps. So what you're saying is, 
the more certs you have as a signal officer actually opens up your job opportunities within the army oh yeah definitely so if you have a lot of those certs they will they will you know you'll get built per messages you will get emails requesting you to go to certain duty duty locations with all these benefits you know i need you to tell me what do you like the most about actually being a signal officer you know as far as like being a signal officer what i've seen even even as a pl i really like the soldiers okay like like the signal soldiers they are really an intelligent group uh, of individuals very motivated extremely smart because uh, i mean to be a to be any to be any 25 series you you have to be you have to be smart and have like you know a certain gt as that score so like you know when i was a pl the thing i missed the most is actually my soldiers and i'm pretty sure i mean you did pl time oh, i'm yeah. pretty sure it's the same thing for every pl you know you miss the soldiers you know hell yeah but um you know i i really missed uh, the intellectual individuals that i interacted with every day every day was you know every day we were given a a problem and we were asked to solve that problem it was really uh you know, sitting down, uh, trying to see the mission and trying to see how we can overcome that. So I really miss that about about Signal, the quality of the soldiers. Signal has a really good quality soldier. So I think that's what I miss uh, the most about Signal. And probably one of the things that I don't like about Signal is how undervalued or how underused Signal soldiers are. Mm. Like for example, um, I was part of uh, my previous battalion you know, a lot of my soldiers, even when uh, when I was a PL, a lot of them would get tasked out with just, you know, ridiculous tasks. You know, you know how it is, PL life, they tasked out. Sorry. Sorry from the S3 himself. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you you did um, you did tell us that you are located in um, Colorado. So um, is there anything specific about being a signal officer that you can only do in Colorado or is it pretty general um what you do in colorado you basically do everywhere else no i mean I, I would say it's pretty general being a signal like i said because we the mission for for signal is almost the same any at any uh duty station you go to the same you know the same thing that you could do at jblm is the same thing you could do at fort carson same thing you can do in uh fort sam houston in san antonio the mission like it, it really does not change mm. It doesn't change at all, yeah. It's okay. the same mission, whatever base you go to. Okay. My next question for you is, have you been deployed? And if you have or have not, does the job of a signal officer change or will you generally do the same job deployed? Yeah, so I currently have not been deployed yet. We were actually supposed to be deployed uh, this upcoming year, but I guess it was hacked, so we're not getting deployed. Um, I actually tried to jump on a deployment uh, last year with 4th Cap, but it didn't happen, unfortunately. But as far as like, the actual job, it does it does change quite a bit. So as far as your day-to-day -day operations back in garrison, it's more maintenance. When you're back in garrison, you know, uh, doing your signal maintenance on your combo equipment, a, lo a lot of vehicle maintenance. Um, because you have certain vehicles that provide internet access from the satellite to the battalion, so you have to do maintenance. Maintenance on those vehicles takes a long time. That's garrison. Now, when you're out in the field, uh, your mission is different in the sense that you're providing, you're directly providing those services to the battalion, and it's ensuring that those services are working on a constant basis. Gotcha. And w when you're in the field, I mean, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm in a meeting like four times a day, a cub, a bug, which is, you know, commander's update brief, uh, brigade update brief, okay. your S6 sync. Got so it. constantly in a meeting and just ensuring it's uh, the old temple, the operation temple is pretty high when you're in the field because, like I said, comms go, you know, from one second to another, comms can, can be working 100%. And then all of a sudden, it just stops working. So you're, you're constantly on the phone with civilians trying to get this... Uh, you know, trying to get the internet access back up. So it's uh, it's very busy when you're out in the field. With all this experience that you have, um, it, it seems like you have you have a wealth of knowledge about your your field, and I think that's I think that's amazing. I, I think that's great, and I applaud you. Um, so with everything that you know, 
if um, if you know a four star general came down and was like Kenny, I want you to change one thing about being a signal officer. What would you change if you would change anything? That's a good question. One thing I would change about being a signal officer. I'm glad you actually mentioned that. One thing that I would change. I, I think signal bolic in general. So bolic stands for uh, basic officer leadership course. Mm-hmm. It needs to be longer and more technical because I mean, as you know, as an officer, you're, you're kind of a generalist. Gotcha. That that ar- army considers uh, army officers generalists. You know, you're supposed to be a jack of all trade. But I, I've seen it with myself a lot. As far as a signal officer, I feel like I rely too much on my operators. Ah. You know, as far as like, because the operators, and what I mean by operators are like the enlisted personnel, as far as like, let's say a 25 uniform, he is the subject matter expert on that radio. So a lot of times I find myself relying too much on them. You know, I wish we would have gotten more training on radios, more training on the actual satellites, more training on just all the signal equipment so I don't have to rely so heavily on them. Because, uh, you know, Bolick for us was only four months. It was only four months with the first month being, uh, you know, general, just general army information. So that cuts Bolick down to three months. Mm. So you kind of touch every topic in signal when you're in Bolick, but you don't, you know, you don't master it. You don't master it. It's kind of just like they show you certain things just so you know the overall layout, but you never master it. So I find myself, even when I was the PL, you know, you rely too much on your operators. And that's good, but that's bad. You know, because if one of your guys leaves, then you're kind of stuck there just scratching your head. So I wish the, the, the Army, as far as signal goes, you know, gave us a little bit more training as far as just the equipment, how the equipment comes to, into play in the whole battalion. And just uh, our overall concept of signal. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so uh, I think you kind of went over this next question during when you, when you talked about what are the benefits of uh, being a twenty five. But um, you know, just just to um, just so we can make this clear for the audience, does being a signal officer transfer over to the civilian world, and how? does it transfer over to the civilian world? Oh yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. Um, yeah, you know, Signal, that's why currently the Army is hurting for Signal officers because the actual Signal field directly transfers to the civilian government sector. Um, right now, as far as like captains, the Army is hurting really bad for Army captains um, because your, your job directly translates to any civilian sector or government job um, you know as a signal officer you you work with uh, satellite communications uh, internet internet communications phone communications so just like the army the civilian sector needs those services as well the, the civilian sector needs uh, internet access the civilian sector needs data phone access, so all these government entities, you know, that you can apply for are there for you, are there for, uh, for your taking, uh, especially now with Signal requiring a TS. Um, it used to be a secret, but now uh, Signals require a TS. So, you know, if, if you have, let's say, a TS with certs, you're, you're, you're a hot commodity. Okay. So a lot of, you, so, you know, so a lot of officers, especially at the captain level, um, you know, these government agencies like uh, NSA, uh, they'll come knocking at your door and whatnot. And, you know, they'll throw you a, a salary or a figure that, you know, that'll make you think twice before they take <laughs> in the army. You know, you'll be like, you're going to pay me this much? Or you mean to tell me you're going to pay me this much and I don't, I don't have to wake up at 5 in the morning to PT? Yeah, that's a full send. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as the the job translating, yeah, it, it directly translates to a lot of civilian uh, jobs with with certain uh, agencies, whether it's the FBI, CIA, NSA, um, you know, even even uh, I had a buddy of mine that he uh, he left the signal court 
to go work for a, a police agency as an uh, as an uh, IT guy. I don't know exactly what he's doing for them. Officers um, don't generally have contracts. We usually incur obligations, you know, minus us OCS guys. When our, our um, we come in, we do have that little three year contract. So. Um, what are your plans after your, you know, your first initial three years? Do you plan to stay in? Do you want to go out, get that two hundred and fifty thousand dollar paying job, buy that Lambo, and um, <laughs> live the good life? I mean, you got to break it down for the audience so we can know what is Kenny doing. Yeah, man, that's a that's a such a multi layered question because there's so much that you can do. So my contract, uh, funny, my, my, my contract is until February of 2022. So I can actually, if I wanted, I could throw my refrat in like right now. Mm. So for, for, you, for those of you that don't know what a refrat is, it's a refrain from active duty, which, you know, for officers, like you stated before, um, if you want to stop being active duty, you throw in your refrat packet and you, it'll usually get approved. But uh, I'm, I'm in that time time frame where I can uh, throw in my refrat packet or uh, I can continue being a signal corps officer, little triple C and become a, uh, a captain in the signal corps. But as of right now, um, I'm actually considering psychological operations or civil affairs. I am uh, still stuck between those two. I have to speak to a couple of people just see how their day-to-day -day operations are. But I am currently uh, in the year group right now where I can throw in my application for psychological operations and or civil affairs. So as far as what I want to do next, you know, Signal Corps has been good. I've learned a tremendous amount of tremendous amount of information. I've been, really enjoyed the people that I've met, the soldiers that I've worked with, but I want to do something a little bit more high speed, mm. you know, because I know you, you know, straight out of Bolick, you know, you got your P, your, your PL time, you you went to airborne school, so you you did all that high speed stuff already. Yeah, I'm just an average guy. I'm just an average guy. <laughs> so me, unfortunately, being signal, I try to throw, uh, I try to do an airborne packet, but it it got denied because I'm signal. There's no reason for a signal officer to be airborne, mm, you know, true. unless you're unless you're in an airborne unit. You know, before I get older or whatnot, so I'm definitely going to be dropping my my packet. Okay, Kenny. Um, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, we got we just have one more question for you. If you could go back, you know, you, this is you, Kenny, right now with all this experience, all of this knowledge. If you could go back to OCS, I mean, I mean, actually, fuck that. If you could speak to any person that wants to become a signal officer in the future, do you have any words of wisdom for anybody looking to get? into the signal core do you have anything for them oh yeah i mean there's so many things you can do just to improve your the aspect of your job learn your equipment learn your you know without getting too technical um the army has technical manuals tms you know good advice read those ahead of time you know find out what your let's say you're on staff waiting for your platoon time um you know pull up the MTO for the company that you're going to be taking over and just read that MTO as far as the equipment that you will be in charge of and just start familiarizing yourself with that equipment that you're going to be in charge of so that you have a better understanding of the whole mission for that company. And don't be, don't be afraid to ask questions that helped me out with the PL. And, um, you know, I would always ask questions, you know, I didn't know something, I would ask my E4s questions, you know, they've been in the army longer than I have and mm. they are the subject matter expert on that certain equipment. So I was never afraid to ask my commander questions, my first sergeant questions, uh, my platoon sergeant questions, just be very open in communication, very important, just being an officer in general. Hey, from the bottom of my heart, seriously, thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. For the audience out there listening, I will speak to Kenny after the interview's over. And if he's okay with it, if he's okay with it, then we will 
we, we will talk about putting um, maybe some contact information or social media at the bottom of the video. But I do know Signal two years from now will be a very researched video. It'll be a very researched topic. And I don't want, this guy could be a married man. And I don't want the Instagram models sliding into his, this young man's DMs like that. You know, I do not want the smoke from his wife coming my way. Because I am going to be too busy for the smoke that his wife is going to give me. So, guys, that is it for the interview with Kenny. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, you guys can hit me up on Snapchat or Instagram. Snapchat, KLOP95. Instagram, KIDTHNDR2. And uh, like I always say at the end of all my videos, don't live the same year 75, 80, 85, 90 times and then try and call it a life. My name is Dom. This is Kenny, guys. And uh, thank you for tuning into the video and we will catch you guys later. Peace.